Woman podcast show. And yours, your, the host for the, <laughs> the host of our show is, of course, yours truly, Jessica R. Bunavaj. Okay, first of all, before I start, I want to thank Proxy for all my outfits. Proxy.com. Um, if you are looking for a secondhand clothing from your inf favorite influencers or favorite actors, showbiz personalities, go to proxy.com. And of course, later on, I'm going to tell you about the insurance, the company that is our sponsor, and of course, my wash, my vagina wash. Can I say vagina on the podcast show? I think it's legal. It's legal, right, Aaron? Vagina wash. See, this is why I am so passionate about relationship and marriages because I want, if I can save it, save it. But there are some, and if, if you can't, then we can't, you know, but then... The relationship that's moving forward, that is happening right now, I want to save it. So, but that's why our guest for today is so perfect. Perfect, perfect. She will share her testimony. It's real life. It's real story, women. So, you know, stick with us. Okay, now, for today, I don't think that there's anyone, Aaron, I can see it, <laughs> and there's anyone who enters into a relationship thinking that they're going to end things right. Generally, when we decide to date someone or to move in with them, you know, um, or marry them, we do, not, we, do, we do not have that intention that, you know, something is going to go wrong. You know, we're always thinking it's going to be perfect. Everything is going to be good. But somehow, somehow, things doesn't end the way you want it to be. It's okay. So, our, our um, what do you call that? Our quote for today is from Margaret Thatcher. I love this woman. I love this girl. Plan your work for today and every day. Then work your plan. I think this is a good quote for all of you women out there who's starting a new life, being single and, you know, moving forward and loving again. Okay, so here is, oh my gosh, I forgot to ask how you pronounce her name. This is our guest for today, Daylene. Hello, Daylene. Yeah. Mask. Mask. Yeah. Mask. Okay, okay. Hi, how are you? How are you? Good to see you. Thank you so much for coming to the Polish Woman Show. Okay, Daylene, how do you pronounce your name again? Maiski. Maiski. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Love this, it's so sexy. Maishki, Deline Maishki. Maishki. Okay, Deline, can you bless, bless? <laughs> okay, English is my second language, okay? So if I'm like, <laughs> my, my, what do you call this? My English will always be under construction. <laughs> I'll never be <laughs> perfect. Okay, what, tell us about yourself. Tell us your testimony. And yeah. um, so, what um, about you? Who are you? What is your story? What is, you know? Yeah, well, to understand kind yeah. of, you know, what happened, um, you have to know kind of the background a little bit, and that was um, my dad was paralyzed from the waist down mm -hmm. when he was 19, and him and my mom had only been married for like six months. And my mom was told by... Six the, months? Six months. Wow. And my mom was told um, by the military doctors to get out of her marriage while she could. And she asked why, and they said, because your life will never be the same. And she said, but I married him until death do we part. And uh, so she devoted her life um, to him. And um, then six years later, I was born. And then after that, my brother. Um, and she, my dad was an amazing man, um, truly um, who I looked up to. Um, he loved my mom. My mom loved him. So I had a wonderful childhood. And then he died suddenly when I was 13. Mm -hmm. And um, my mom was then 35, widow, with a 13-year-old, and my brother had just turned six. So I was very much, um, you know, familiar with plot twists in my life mm -hmm. and how to overcome adversity and changes like that that are big disruptions. Um, so I saw that, and a, a lesson that I learned at that time was that I knew, and my dad had always encouraged education, but I knew I wanted to go as far as I could because I never knew what life might bring my way. Um, and both of my parents, I had been raised in the church, so I had a strong faith foundation. Um, so that also was something that helped me get through. 
Um, but I knew that I wanted to get as high as I could in my education to be able to take care of my family because I just never knew what life might bring my way. And so fast forward, um, you know, to getting married. Yeah. Said, nobody enters into it thinking that, you know, this is going to expire in five years or 10 years. Yeah. Um, and you know, it's not going to be perfect. Um, but in my situation, um, for my story, I don't know where you want me to stop, but it, you know, I, you know, it was over 20 years, just over 20 years, um, married when my next plot twist happened. Um, and at the time my children were seven and 11. Wow. They were very young. Yes. Yeah. So 20 years, you guys, 20 years. I mean, who would even thought like after 20 years, I thought like, okay, we've been married for so long that, okay, let's just do this. Mm -hmm. Let's do something about yeah. the mind like what happened no i don't mind sharing at all mm -hmm. um so it, you're right right you think you get past the seven year mark or the 10 year you know yeah. um and in my situation um you know it was a very deceitful um behavior that was at play that i didn't realize mm -hmm. um was happening um and which i discovered in facebook that's how i discovered that what was going on yeah. um, because um he was really trying to hide it, I think, and try to play it off like it was going to be something else. But unfortunately, I discovered Facebook first and the tr what I call now the transcript. Mm -hmm. um, so he did have an affair with another woman mm -hmm. that was at our private Christian school mm -hmm. who, um, the same woman, also went to my church. So this is like, it, I think that's what made this such a gut punch for me mm -hmm. is I raised my children, you know, in the Christian church and yeah. they were at a Christian school. So everything they were being taught and everything they were seeing in the home, mm -hmm. this was so contrary to that. So contrary to what they learned. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, and there was never fighting. There was never, you know, mm -hmm. I think couples have disagreements, but for the most part, you, you would never have known. People were so surprised by, by what happened. So, um, once I discovered what happened, you know, obviously I confronted him about that. Um, and, and thank goodness I had my evidence. Um, mm -hmm. Because I think had I not had that, he would have tried to have spun it a different way. Mm -hmm. um, but that's, you know, that's something I've learned along the way. When, we, when you're ready, I can share the kind of aha moments that yeah. I've had about why it happened. But it was a real um, gut punch at the time. Because, you know, you don't think something's going to end and that it's mm -hmm. going to end that way. And I felt... Um, kind of like, a, I described it like a snow globe being yeah. shaken upside down. I just thought things were spinning, trying to understand kind of the nature of what happened. But um, I t I'm a researcher and a planner, so I go into planning mode of trying to analyze and understand kind of the why of it happening. Um, and I knew at that point um, there would probably be no returning. It's very hard to come back from an affair. And I, ha yes. I had friends who had gone through it, and one of them got me this book, which I can share. It's called The Anatomy of an Affair. Mm -hmm. And and I like to dive into kind of understanding kind of the anatomy, like it says, of what happened. And discovered that there are cl classifications of affairs. Who knew? What, what is it? Oh, my God. I so, want to learn about so, this. <laughs> right? And then so mine was a class three affair, and that was an entangled affair. And, and I was like, now I understand. And it diagnoses like how long it would take to recover from this and what it takes. And I was like, there's probably, the, the, once the trust, especially in a 20 plus year marriage, mm -hmm. once that trust is broken, that's really hard to come back from. And I had a girlfriend who had gone through it and spent tens of thousands of dollars in therapy. And I thought it takes two willing parties to do that. Mm -hmm. And I knew that that was not going to be the case in my situation. Um, had met with my pastor mm -hmm. many, many times to try to understand and make sense of what was happening. So I dove into books and trying to understand mm -hmm. just what was happening. And I really, I dedicated the next year of my life to it's understanding really it, getting yeah. myself as my new identity mm -hmm. as a single woman, like understanding what that meant, um, becoming comfortable with taking my ring off. Yes. Um, because for me, it wasn't a piece of jewelry. It was a symbol. Um, cause I believed in the sanctity of marriage and what that meant. Yeah. Because the example from your parents, right? They right. Stick with, with it through thick and thin, through better. Oh, okay. they should, they were definitely for better or for worse. Yeah. They literally, they're the epitome of like the perfect marriage that were there for, from, you know, 
ups yes. and downs, yeah. yeah. And have you, no, the reason why, ladies, the reason why, you know, she's not saying, you know, she's not sharing her testimony to, you know, uh, how do I say this, to, she wants to share this testimony because she wants you ladies to know that if ever you're going through the same thing, because I went through that. I mean, I went through, when I moved here, it was not really an affair, but somehow a good close friend of mine, literally my first close friend actually had a thing. It wasn't that, I think it was more like the emotional because I was not giving the attention and the love that, that my husband needed because there was like some, some sort of resentment when, I, when we moved here. And uh, there was like a fourth thing, but then again, you know, me, I'm like, I'm the girl. This is why sometimes it's important. You check their email. <laughs> check their email. Check. We're so open with each other that I think she. But it was different with him. He didn't delete anything because he, I think he wanted me to find out. But somehow, women out there, they don't. They do not care if the person is married or not. That is so true. It's it's so sad how other you know women can do this to another you know woman i mean seriously yeah i had protected my marriage and i i was always really careful and i travel because i'm a professional and so i traveled all the time and i would often travel i had a male boss and i was so good with boundaries and he would often comment because he's my boss for like 17 years and he said you're so good like there's just this force field like around you like mm -hmm. you have good boundaries in your life mm -hmm. and it was true and when this happened for me I happened to go to the playground one morning and I saw this weird exchange between him and that woman. And I was like, well, that was weird. And I was like, oh, yeah. right. so I went on to work, you know, and then that night I said, hey, I saw a weird exchange with this woman that uh, this morning. And, and he's, oh, well, it was nothing. And I said, well, maybe for you, it might yeah. not have been nothing, but I noticed that there's never a man with her and she doesn't wear a wedding ring. So I don't know her situation and I don't know her. Yeah. But what I know is that when a woman is seeking attention, mm -hmm. any attention like the one you gave mm -hmm. can turn into something else. Like it was a slippery slope. So I said, just guard your heart, guard your mind. Yeah. Those were my words. I didn't know that two weeks later I would be discovering what I discovered. So I think that it's, it's really important. Like you have to have those boundaries. And you mentioned emotional. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't, affairs take on many forms. Yeah. And the emotional can actually be just as harmful. Oh gosh! It just you know, be, and then yes, then you add the layer of physical. But that emotional is, I think, often harder, right, mm -hmm. to untangle. Yeah, that's what I've heard. That sometimes it's better. Okay, just do the sex with no emotions. <laughs> sometimes I said that that's better. But oh my gosh, if there was sex involved during that time in my situation, I would have been gone so fast but there was no, not so <laughs> no but it's truly truly hurtful i mean how did you how did you overcome being a single mom starting from wow from having him you know of course it's it's good that you have a help right from having him and then all of a sudden you know not having anyone it's like now it's all about you yeah, you know, I, I'm very confident in my role as a mom, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it did hurt because I, I love the idea of having a partner for life mm -hmm. and raising my children with that partner, um, but I, I was like, well, here it is. I've seen it done before. My mom did it, mm -hmm. and she never complained. I mean, that I look back and I'm like, I think I might complain way more than my mom did sometimes. <laughs> And, you know, but my mom never complained. She just did it. And mm -hmm. so I knew it could be done. And I had had other women, interestingly, like, would come up to me. I wasn't talking much about it. So people somehow were finding out, and they would come up to me to share their story. Yeah. And that's when I was like, okay, I can do this. Um, and then the, you know, I prepared myself. I think you said that earlier, too, about preparing yourself. Yeah. You work the plan. Mm -hmm. I did. I made sure that I got my, I went to school, got my doctorate. Mm -hmm. My goal was to get my doctorate by the time I was 30. Yeah. I did that. Nice. Didn't have my children. Yeah. Did that. It's like yeah. everything was so planned out. Yeah. And then God's like, well, you didn't plan this one yeah. out. Right? And so, <laughs> but I knew that I was equipped mm -hmm. to figure it out. And um, 
So I thought, well, we're just going to do this. And I did. I just dove right into navigating work and the kids. And my mom also lives um, there in, with me. So she, we, we were able to kind of figure it out. Mm -hmm. um, but I was still mom. Like, I never wanted to delegate that to anybody else. Yes. Um, and I just was honest with my kids. They would ask me questions. I would not hide it from them. And I think that's a personal choice. I know some women will feel differently, but I... I felt my kids were, we'd always been very open with each other, mm -hmm. and I wanted them to have the truth. Yes. Um, and I think it's all age appropriate, by the way. Mm -hmm. I will share my daughter, shared an, an Apple account with her father, which I didn't know. Mm -hmm. I, you know, it was not my area of expertise was mm -hmm. navigating Apple phones, but it was his. And they were tied together. So she saw text exchanges between the two yeah. of them after he moved out. Okay. So she discovered who the woman was and put two and two together that this is the reason why he left. And she came and asked me, is this why? And I said, yes, I'm not going to hide it from you. And so, um, you know, I said, but you know, your brother's young, so yeah. we need to probably wait. He shouldn't know mm -hmm. everything. And then, um, my daughter shared it. Um, all this happened for me in November, right before Thanksgiving. Yeah. And then, this is in 2018, and then um, by Easter, my daughter just, you know, like, without warning, <laughs> tells her brother that the reason why, do you, know, do you know the reason why dad's not here? And she said, because he's with another woman, and my son says, he of course raised in the church, <laughs> says, yeah. that's impossible, you can only be married to one woman. Ah. And so then my daughter, I was just, I actually had a glass of wine, and I was just like, better just keep sipping because she's going to tell her and there's yeah. nothing I can do right now. Yeah. And so she told him and then, you know, now I think it's kind of a non-issue. They just, it's almost matter of fact for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nothing's hidden mm -hmm. and that's what I want. I think that they will come out stronger. Yes. Knowing, mm -hmm. um, kind of what happened. Yeah. Um, we don't really talk about it anymore. It's been a, enough time has yes. passed. Um, but you know, I've kind of navigated to single life, you know, single mom life, if you will. Mm -hmm. I have amazing friend support. Mm -hmm. um, so that's so really important. It's to incredibly have that, yeah. important to have your inner circle yeah. of friends yeah. um, that have your back. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that to not also be afraid to reach out. Oh, you know, I like that. You can't. You just. Yes. You can't. And I would. I'm the type that will want to kind of go inward. Mm -hmm. Because I want to try to understand my emotion, mm -hmm. and I run, so I like to try to take it outside, and I run and try to process. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you just need to sit down and just be able to talk, not for yeah. them to fix it, not for them to give you any direction, but just to have somebody, somebody that's your support. And if you are that person, if you are that friend, listen to them. We just talked about this last week. You know, listen, listen as a friend. Do not judge. Don't. You know, you can advise, I mean, but listen to them because you need it. Yeah. That time, those those are the times that you really need someone that you can talk to. But it's good that you said that, to like really talk about it and be open because some people don't. They feel embarrassed. They feel, and now they, they hide it, they keep it to themselves, and then all of a sudden, like, they just explode one day. And that's when, you know, anxiety and depression and, you know, sometimes addiction happens because they keep it to themselves but it's good what you did yeah it really it really does yeah. help um you know i had reached out to a friend that like i mentioned i had a friend who had gone through it too and mm -hmm. one of the things piece of advice that her and her husband told me was that i would be picking up radio radioactive shrapnel for years I, to yeah, come. i like that I, and i was like that has stuck with me mm -hmm. because when there are like little flare-ups that happen for, and there will be flare-ups trust me like yeah. you you think you're over a hump and then something happens and but you just you navigate it it's fine. never gonna end yeah. but it's a little red this is a little red and they it's less and less now yeah but in the beginning yeah you're picking up some radioactive shrapnel and and i a lesson that i learned is that this was his mess mm -hmm. that he created sometimes he would try to draw me in to tell me i need to do something with the kids or i need to talk to them or uh, because they're not you know loving on him the yeah. way they should because he's their father and my pastor had told me finally, I kept talking, like, he wants me to talk to them about, you know, X, Y, or Z. And he says, but he created it. 
That's yes. not your role anymore. You yes. don't need to fix this. Yes. So that was another, like I think, really good piece of advice that I learned along the way is mm -hmm. that to understand what was my responsibility now and what was his because we were now separate. We were no longer one, one. if you will. Oh, I like that. And you really, you took, you took your time taking care of yourself. A you year, took your, a solid year. I love that. I love that. Did you, did, did it ever occur to you that maybe it can be saved somehow? Or did you even try, the two of you? You know, um, I walked it slowly mm -hmm. at the beginning. I mean, initially I was like, there is no way. Mm -hmm. um, because for me... I really believe, again, in the sanctity of marriage, I believe in the vows that I had taken. Mm -hmm. And I had met with the pastor, and and then he, you know, they, they, were, they were good with me, but then at one point I said, I just need to know biblically, am I good to walk away? Yeah. And he said, you have abandonment, and then you have the um, the infidelity. And I'm like, two, I have two of three reasons biblically. Yeah. And I, I had peace of mind. Um, and I think as I... I kind of like played it slow for the probably the first couple of months just mm -hmm. to see because I wasn't sure. There's a lot of swirl. So when this happens to someone in a relationship, you're you're just dealing with kind of this aftermath and it's, you're just trying to make sense of it. Yeah. But it took me not even two months and then I realized, yeah, this is it. I will not turn back. Um, and then even when you go through that process though, mm -hmm. um, I found myself wondering am I doing the right thing because once it's final for me mm -hmm. I thought it's final I will close that door and it will never be opened again yeah even though I have children and I think that's what's hard for people is you get but the children but the ch and I recognized we were going to be fine like we didn't need to have him back and me trying to reconcile and and um, I had a woman again going through this process. She kind of goes, "Should I pull the? You submit the paperwork, and it's crazy to think like, yeah. oh, it's just out there, and now it's really going to happen." I'm like, "Should I pull the papers back?" And she had walked through it too, mm -hmm. and she said, "My best advice for you is, don't pull your paperwork back, because you can always get remarried." And I'm like, "Oh, that's brilliant. That I, is I, amazing. Yeah, that is so good. You can always get remarried." And I was like, okay, and that gave, but uh -huh. I'm glad I never pulled the paperwork back. Yeah. And then at that point, I had come to full closure. I knew there was no way I would go back. And I had been in a period of discovery, as my pastor told me I would be, um, with his personality, with you know, my ex's personality. He said, you're going to be in a period of discovery for years to come. And it was so true. I felt like God would reveal things and reveal yeah. things. And I'm like, okay, these are more signs. So I became very comfortable and confident in my decision. So it all happened in November. All paperwork's filed by April. Mm -hmm. And I had come to a peace and I'd found closure in my mind. Yeah. And confidence in where I was. Oh, I like and, and with my and my identity. And it's it's speaking you know, of identity, yeah. you you mentioned discovery. What is that one thing that you discovered about yourself? Oh my gosh. Um that I could, I was, um, that I discovered about myself during this um, transformation, you know? Oh, you know, really just, um, I was okay on my own. I think that's, ah! you know, I think that's probably what I would say mm -hmm. because your identity, even though I knew who I was, like I knew who Daylene was, mm -hmm. but I also knew who Daylene and my ex were. Yes. Like we were... Like, it was like, you would say my name, you would say his name, and us and the kids. Yes, yes. So I had it's to become, connected. like, yeah. I had to un separate that. Yes. So I knew it's who I yeah. was, mm -hmm. and I knew what I wanted for my life, and mm -hmm. I was okay with saying, I'm a single mom. I'm not married. I think I was very much concerned about the perception that people would have mm -hmm. about me as a single mom, and what was the stigma attached to that. Yeah. Um, so I think just being comfortable with being on my own. Oh, I love this. So ladies, don't, you know, if you're going through this, just be strong. Just be strong and discover. Try to discover yourself as opposed to, do you think, as opposed to saving that marriage? Yeah. Do you think you advise 
to discover yourself first. To take the time because, I, and I had learned that too from having lost my dad. You know, anytime you have a major disruption like that in life, they always advise you, don't do anything major for like a year, right? And so um, I think taking that time, and it's hard, it's really a hard process to go through, mm -hmm. but I focused on just myself, my kids, mm -hmm. I'm a runner, so like I really dove into just my running and, and finding that joy of being on my own. Yeah. Um, and there's life after that. I mean, I now have a new, you know, a new chapter, yeah. and that is what I think was hard for me was to imagine a new chapter, a new person. Like, what's that like in the trusting? Yeah. Again. <sighs> I can't believe we're done, Erin. <laughs> it's so fast, right? Wait, I just want to, I just want our um, ladies to have a take home um, before we end our discussion. Oh my God, this is like so fast. I mean, I feel like I need more time with you. So what is it? What do you do after a happily ever after? Well, like I mentioned, you, you discover who you are. Yes. What are your joys in life? What is it that you want mm -hmm. to do? What what helps you be fulfilled? Um, and then for me, it was um, venturing out again. I mean, it's scary to date. I mean, I dated before there was online dating. So <laughs> I know. This was a whole new world for me. Um, but through that, I will tell you, you, there are some really good people out there. And I yeah. have um, really, I never knew... A relationship could have this much joy uh, and it's absolutely um, amazing to be in a situation where I really feel like I have a partner for life now and I never thought I would say that um, four years out from my experience um, the other thing that I would say for women is just um, you know advice that I have is to have something of your own so that you can, life will bring, bring you plot twist, but can you take care of yourself? Can you take care of your family? Because mm -hmm. you just never know. It could be a situation like my mom or it could be a situation like this that I experienced. But to have something that's your own mm -hmm. and to know who you are. I love that. That was a good advice, you guys. That's a good advice. I want to ask one more. Can we, one, one, one minute, one more minute. Okay, this is, um, I, I, I don't want to forget about this. You said to me when we were doing the pre-interview that you were not scared financially and I want you to tell the ladies, all of you, this is one thing that I want you to take home because somehow, I, you know, we all need that. We all need to, you know, to hear this. Financially, what is your advice? Well, like I said, I wanted to mm -hmm. have the highest education I could um, and have a good career. And But you had your own. I had my own yes. career, mm -hmm. and that was really important to me. Mm -hmm. um, and that, but that's also who I was. Yes. I, I knew that I liked to do it. I liked to be in a profession. I liked to be a given. I'm a servant leader, mm -hmm. and so I like to serve. And so having that um, equipped me financially to not be. No, was I scared a little bit? Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. it's incredibly scary for someone to walk out the door and not give a dime. And I'm not kidding. Not another dime to the household and dump a bunch of expenses in my lap mm -hmm. and then turn around and ask me for money after doing that. Yeah. So, but I knew once the dust settled and I kind of sorted everything out, cause like I said, I'm a planner so I can figure things out. I was going to be okay. And I can tell you now I'm fine. Aww. I'm in a really good place and my children are cared for. I can take care of their college. I don't need to have anybody else controlling what I like to say, the narrative in my life. I'm in control of the narrative in my life. Love that. Oh my God. Thank you so much, Nadine. I, I have learned from her. If I learned from her, you guys, I know the ladies who have learned from her. Thank you so thank much. You. Wait. Okay. My advice for today. I understand that no one wants to think about breaking up after they've gotten their personal happily ever after. But if you can take care of yourself, your next chapter may be your best chapter right look at her she's so happy <laughs> she's smiling again and i think this is the best chapter of her life you know 20 years was okay too but i think this is like just the beginning of the best chapter of her life thank you so thank much you. Thank, thank you, you. and cheers. Cheers. cheers cheers yay <laughs>
<laughs> okay guys don't forget to give love to the next person that you see after watching and listening to our show happy monday and happy good week <laughs> have a good week ladies and see you next monday love you all Ladies, today's episode is partially brought to you by Aaron Cox of ACX Financial. At ACX Financial, they specialize in life insurance with living benefits as well as secure strategies for generational wealth building. You can call 213-474-7360. Again, it's 213-474-7360. Today for information to schedule your free financial strategy consultation.